Endure until the end. Endure until the end. Shalom Alakim. This is your Hebrews like brother, Meshava, here in the city of Detroit. We'd like to give all praises and all honors to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash, double honors, and to the apostles and to the elders and the bishops of the great millstone that taught us this truth and peace and salutations to, hope for, to the hopeful elects. Shalom Akims. We're making today's video on enduring till the end. Okay, enduring till the end, because that's one thing that we have to make sure that we maintain understanding, enduring till the end, because there's a lot of things that's going to transpire and be happening. Okay, in uh, in the latter days, which are now, really. Because there's a lot of turmoil and a lot of things that's going on right now. Over over in uh, Ukraine, there's a war going on. Okay. Let's see. Second Timothy chapter. Okay. And so there's a lot of things that's going on that we have to be uh, 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 in a strong in a strong way, we have to maintain our recognizance, maintain a level head, maintain being in the stability of the word. Remember, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Okay, we got to remember that because we got to maintain in doing and what it's going to take is going to take this word. The wisdom and the knowledge of this word, we have to maintain standing strong on that and keeping our faith, okay? And keeping our faith. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4, um, starting off at, at verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and... 2 Timothy chapter 4, okay. And shall be turned unto fables. And that's what, what a lot of our people are. They're being turned to fables. They, they, they cannot hear this truth. Their ears are turned away from this truth. They can't hear it. They, they can't even understand it. They don't have no idea of what's going on and what's about to unfold. You got you got World War Three about to unfold. Joe Biden, he's about to pass. Kamala Harris, she's about to become uh, the president. And she's already made it clear that she uh, has no problem with enacting the draft, okay, to round up all these young men age 18 through 32, rounding them up during the time of martial law, okay, during the time of martial law. So that means a lot of young, a lot, a lot of these young men are just simply not going to make it. Could the Bible say? Many of them are going to be thrust through. They're going to be killed before they even make it to the battlefield. And the battlefield is going to start off over there in Ukraine. When you see the prison buses lined up on the main, the main market streets and different things, they'll be there to round up the young men. Let's go to verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Be watchful. We got to be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Right now, I'm afflicted with body mites and low vision blindness. That's what I'm being afflicted with. And, uh, you know, um, it's just amazing the different weight of the uh, weights of the afflictions that are upon not only me, but the others. But the Bible tells us do not allow our afflictions to weigh us down. And so we can't allow our afflictions to weigh us down. We have to keep trying to push this truth no matter what our affliction is. Find a way to push the truth somehow. Okay? Do the work of an evangelist. Okay? Somehow, some way. Okay? Do the work of an evangelist. Somehow, some way, make full proof 
of thy ministry. This is what we what we must do. Okay, for I am now ready to be offered. Okay, and the time of my departure is at hand. Okay, because the time the time has come. The Lord is made, making sure that we understand the time has come. Verse seven: I have fought a good fight, and that's what we got to do. You understand? That's what we got to do. You fight the good fight every time you step outside your door. You fight the good fight any time when you're at home. In your mind, you're fighting the good fight because that's where Satan likes to attack you. In your mind, attacking what you think. Because once your mind is attacked, that affects your, all, all, your everything. Your mind, your emotions, your body is all attacked. And that will cause your spirit to, to, to be low. That's why we spiritually feed ourselves. You got to be, be spiritually fed. And well, how are you spiritually fed? With this word. You're spiritually fed with this word. So that way you can be strong enough to what? Fight. To fight the good fight. Okay? I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And that's one more, most important thing. Keeping the faith. We have to keep the faith, no matter what. And it's going to be all different types of temptations that come, that come at us. Uh, Sirach chapter 2 tells us, My son, when you come to the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. And that's what it is. It's temptations that keep coming at us from different ways. And it's strong, too. Very strong. And it's very difficult. And it takes a lot of self-discipline. A lot of self-discipline. And self-motivation, okay? So we have to stay steadfast in this word, okay? Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, okay? Because there it is. A crown of righteousness is laid up for us because of fighting a good fight. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, he the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. You see? The Lord, crowned by the Lord. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter uh, 5, starting at 16. Okay? Crowned by the Lord himself. Okay? Is a mighty good thing. Okay? And not to me only. No, not just to me. But unto all them that love his appearance. You see? You see? So we come into understanding of that because we have to endure. There are some hard times that's coming, some very serious hard times. And the people are going to have to stand strong <coughs> because there is a great uh, judgment for the world that's coming. Like the song, the song by the, by the, uh, the OJs. No, 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 no. What the OJs? Uh, no, it was, uh, it was, uh, the Isley Brothers, right? When will there be a harvest for the world? Because the time is coming. And so if it's not going to be like people thinking, people thinking when the Lord comes, he's going to be giving out the kisses, hugs, dates, nuts, berries, palms, and, 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 and shit. No, he's not. You know, he's coming. Luke chapter 12, verse 49. I come not to bring peace upon the earth. I come to bring fire. But what would I if it already be kindled? You see? This second Ezra chapter. Hold on. No, second Ezra chapter 15. Second Ezra chapter 15. Verse 1. We're going to read some of this. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. And that's what we're doing. And that's what I'm doing now. Speaking to you the words of prophecy, the words of the scriptures of Yahweh, which I will put in thy mouth. That's what the Lord is doing now by me reading these scriptures, said the Lord. And call them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. The words of the Lord are faithful and true. Fear not, 
the, the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble you, trouble thee that speak against thee. Because you're going to have a lot of people that are going to do that. They're going to speak out against you. They're going to have all different types of things to say. They're going to, uh, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 5, bring uh, 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 neighbor against neighbor. Okay, and we see that happening now. All throughout the, the, the cities. You, you got neighbors killing one another. Just recently, this guy was uh, uh, killed, what, five of his neighbors? A whole family, plus a nine-year-old boy. It's simply because the woman came out and asked him would he, would, would he stop shooting in his front yard with AK-47. You see, the mindset of these people. You know, you got Exodus chapter uh, 20. What is it? Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Bring a false witness against thy neighbor. You got all that going on now, you know? And it's clear. It's clear. The people are in an uproar. They're mad. They're sad. They're angry. And they don't know what to do. Their leadership is, mis is misleading them and causing them to err. And they're, they don't have no way out one way or the other. Because the wicked are in rule. Verse 4. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You see? They're going to die in their unfaithfulness. Just know this and understand this. When you walk outside your door, just about everybody that you see is going to die. It's going to be slaughtered. They're going to be killed. During the time of Jacob's troubles, when the Lord shuts America and this world down, when you have the uh, prison buses lined up on the main market streets and in the main checkpoints, and the martial law police, it being martial law at the time, and the martial law police going around rounding up the young men age 18 through, through uh, 32, catching them uh, all in between the house, all in the alleys, down all in between the streets, catching them in and everywhere. Inside the houses, hiding in the closets, hiding in the basement, hiding in the attic, catching them, dragging them out, and hauling them to FEMA camps or to boot camp. In the boot camp, they're going to get a six to eight week crash course training. It's supposed to be 13 weeks, but it's going to be eight to, to six weeks. They're going to put an AR-15 in, in their hand and plenty of ammunition and put them on the front lines and call it a human shield. They're going to be killed. They're not coming back. Once you see them load up on them prison buses, them long prison buses with the gates on the windows, they're not coming back. You're not going to see them again. Thus saith the Lord. Verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. This is what the Lord is bringing. Plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And right now, in the sword, the, the, the Lord uses uh, the, that so-called uh, uh, white man, that red devil, the Lord uses him as a sword, particularly against the two-thirds, because why? The two-thirds just don't want to listen. And they believe and trust in the so-called white man. And they believe in the system. They believe in the beast and the beast system. They believe in, they believe in, you know, if they, if we all just vote for a qualified candidate, you know, then a white man is going to save you. They believe that they're going to get reparations and that that's going to do them. And, and never mind all that. Because the true reparations is the red devil so-called white man being in chains, handed over to us in chains, and him being our slave. Okay. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. Okay. And famine, right now, what are they trying to do? They're they trying to choke out, out, out all the food. The, uh, uh, a, a lot of different food factories mysteriously been catching on fire. They've been saying a lot of meats have been contaminated one way or another and been destroying them. They've been killing cows. 
whole cows, killing cows. You know, you know, uh, uh, Bill, Bill, uh, 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 Hill Gates buying up all the farmland so the people can't, you know, can't can't grow no farm, no, uh, or set up any farm because they're buying up all the land from the people. The Lord is going to hit it with a sword, famine, and death, and destruction. The Lord is going around, get a wildfires going on, got floods, you got tsunamis, you know, you, you got snowstorms, you got blizzards, you got all these things. You got wild freak tornadoes going on. You got all these things, destruction that's going on right now. And these are the, these are the things you have to endure and keep the faith. You have to endure till the end, no matter what. And there's a whole lot of things that's coming up we still ain't even have yet to encounter. We still got the mark. That's coming up, you know, the see hip, that's coming up, of course. And see, so, you know, we still got Leviathan, we still got aberrations, we still got so many different things that's coming up, you know. And before the uh, actual, uh, uh, the nuclear bombs, before that, we first got to go through the chipping stations, the see hip chipping stations. We got to go through that first, you know, and see who all is going to endure going through that, who's going to accept the chip. Or who's going to accept the uh, 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 the guillotine? You see, because you got a lot of brothers that's in this in, in this truth. Israelites that's on waking up and that's in this truth and that's in the camps, and, and that includes all the camps, all of them, GMS included. You got some brothers that just simply ain't gonna make it because why? They still holding on to the world. They hold on to the world. Let's hold uh, uh, verse six. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the world, hold earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. You see, because the works of the wicked has been fulfilled, and is continuously being fulfilled. You got plastics all in the oceans. That that red devil, the so-called white man, he's the only one that's doing that. You know, you weren't supposed to be putting garbage in the ocean. You weren't supposed to be putting uh, pollution into the waters, polluting the waters. You weren't supposed to be doing that. The, the, the waters help refresh the land. Okay? You know, help give us a, a, a stuff to re revitalization to grow. Okay? You know? And so, but no. Look what's going on now. You got whales, even sharks, beaching themselves. Because they, they're atmosphere their world is the water the sea when you pollute the sea and put plastics and different things microplastics all in the water that's pollution to them to us it would be the same thing it is us trying to breathe breathe in smoke toxic smoke from plastic and tires and rubber and different things and, and us trying to breathe it in it's the same thing for them trying to breathe in plastics microplastics and so they're not able to do that, so they beast themselves. They don't know what else to do. You see? All this being done because of the fulfillment of wickedness, polluting, toxically polluting the whole earth. You see? You know, and the many other different things that's going on. Verse 7, Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more, as touching the wickedness, which they profanely commit, and they do profanely commit. They, they got a system set up, you know, for every different thing of wickedness that the, the, the so-called white man is doing to try to destroy the earth. You got deforesting. Who does this? Who does these things? Deforesting, the so-called white man. He got to cut down the trees, right? Really? No. But he said that he does. You got to cut the trees down to make what? And paper and lumber. Well, there are other different materials that we can make paper and lumber out of besides cutting down all the trees. You see? You see? And then he want to plant trees. He said he want to revitalize and plant trees, but he's planting trees that are not supposed to go uh, uh, in certain regions. Because you, you, every tree has a certain region and area and, you know, geographically in which where it's supposed to be planted or where it was it, it, normally by the Lord 
with that red devil, the so-called white man, he uh, plants trees where he want to, all outside of their geographical locations. You know, and they wonder why the trees have a hard time on actual living, okay, and, and, and sustaining itself, you see. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise, exercise themselves, you see. And the Lord, and, and, and that's just true. The way the Lord has set the, things up, you see. The Lord had, had no longer will he remain silent about these things. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complained continuously. And that's the, the, the hopeful elects that has passed on, and they're up there, they're up there in the heavens right now complaining to the Father about what this red devil down here doing, all his destruction and different things. Verse 9, And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them, the water, and receive unto me all the, the innocent blood from among them. You see? You see? Thus says Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. Verse 10, Behold, my peoples, is led as a flock to the slaughter. And they are. The two-thirds right along with the heathens and the Edomites is led straight to the slaughter. They don't want to hear anything. They can't hear anything because of the seraphim angel that's been placed in charge of them to prevent them from hearing this truth, seeing this truth, or even understanding this truth. You see? And so, and that's all because of the decision that they made to reject the Lord way back in ancient days. So they walk contrary to the Lord, and the Lord is walking contrary to them. And he's punishing them seven times more for their sins. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 27. Okay? And that's just the way that is. Okay? I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. And that Egypt is talking about this spiritual Egypt, America, the house of bondage. This Babylon's mystery city, land of confusion. Okay, verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite. Let's read that again. And I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues. And this Egypt, remember we're talking about America. Because America is spiritual Egypt. With plagues as before, as before, you know he's not going to strike Egypt, this uh, modern day Egypt with deep, no, Egypt, I'm talking about America. As before, and will destroy all the land thereof. You see? You see? In verse 12. Verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plagues of, with the plagues and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. When that time comes, we're going to have to see when the Lord is going to bring all this devastation. He's going to bring all this. We got to be able to endure this that he's bringing. Okay, because he's bringing a whole lot of uh, uh, devastation, the sword, famine, death, and destruction is what the Lord is bringing. Remember that. And we're going to have to endure and keep the faith and keep fighting a good fight. Verse 13, they that, they, they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail. Their blasting and hell, no, through through the blasting and hell, you see, through the blasting, blasting of what, of the, of the chariots firing thermonuclear lasers and the hell falling down, fiery hell, with a fearful constellation. These things are coming. Verse fourteen. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Because the Lord is coming, and he's not coming to play games. You see? Verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. 
It's coming soon. You see, they've made the doomsday, the doomsday clock, well, I think it's 19 seconds, 19 milliseconds or something. You know, it, it's so close to, uh, to a tick. And it, 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 it ain't no more top. It's just tick. And then boom. You see? And so, <laughs> and one people shall stand up and fight against another. And that's what's happening now. And swords in their hands, guns in their hands. You see? You see? Because they're out to kill. People killing each other left and right, left and right, using their guns like crazy. We got multiple shootings left and right all over America. And because the people's in an uproar, they don't know what to do. And they're frustrated. And they see that there's no more future for America. And they see that America is declining. It's in a precipitous downward spiral that they just simply it's not going to spin out of. For there shall be sedition amongst men and and invading one another, and that's what they're doing. People invading one another's homes. You have to be aware of what's going on, to pay attention, and be watchful. As we started off, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and they don't. We don't listen. The people don't listen to the higher ups, to the uh, authorities and officials anymore. They don't believe in what they say anymore. The people just don't believe in their officials no, no more because they, 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 their leaders have misled them. You see, and the course of their actions, you see, shall stand in their power. You see? Because that's the people up wrong. 17. A man shall, des shall de desire to grow. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to because they'll be quarantined off. The different cities, because of martial law, they're going to be quarantined off. The people's not going to be go, not going to be able to go from one city to, to the next city. In some places, in a lot of areas, whole uh, neighborhoods are going to be sanctioned off. So we're not even going to be go from not even going to be able to go from neighborhood to neighborhood. All that's going to be cut out. Okay. And so, listen. Uh, re remember to press the like button if you haven't pressed the like button. Make sure you go ahead and press that like button. And if you haven't already pressed the subscription button, make sure you go ahead and press that subscription button and the notification bell. So that you will be notified each time that I release a video. Okay? And so, and thank you ever so much for that. The water. Verse 18. For because of their pride. You see? And, and America it is filled, full of such, such pride. Being so proud. The proud and the few. And the Marines. You know? And all this mess. The city shall be troubled. Because they're filled with so much pride. The houses shall be destroyed. You see? And the men shall be afraid. Because it'll be the Lord doing all this, causing all this, all this trouble, all this craziness, all this havoc. It'll be the Lord doing it. Remember, shall the tree fall in the city? You know, and, and, and or shall there be any evil done in the city? And, and, and is it not the Lord that is the one that has done it? Roughly paraphrasing, Slaki. And so we have to understand these things. Verse nineteen: A man shall not, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor when his time come. It's gonna be neighbor against neighbor, and false witness against thy neighbor. But shall destroy their houses with the sword. They can go into each other's house with a gun. Trying to take whatever their neighbor got. Whatever their neighbor got, they're going to be trying to take it and steal it. You see? And so, and spoil their goods. They're going to be trying to take what they got because of the lack of bread, the lack of food and water. These are major. Uh, substance, substance and nutrients that we need. There's going to be a lack of it, you know, for the people. And the people are going to be crazy. They're not going to do, and they're not going to know what to do. When you have a shutdown of a martial law, 
prior to that, you're going to have the shutdown of the stores, the convenience stores, and the gas stations, and different things, and the grocery stores, and and the department stores, because of the different attacks that's going to be going on that the people are going to be making. The people are going to be in the uproar, and they're going to be raiding and looting. This is going to spawn off, plus the terrorist attack that's going to be going on, it's going to spawn off martial law. There's going to be no food for the people to get in the stores. All this is going to be raided and looted. So what's going to be next? They're going to start going from house to house, house to house, even though it's going to be martial law. They're going to be doing it during the daytime. And remember this, just like over in Russia right now, the martial law police are going to be kicking in people's doors and going into their houses day and night. Dragging people out into the front of the yards, killing some people, shooting them straight, straight forward, and right in their face, right in the head, and killing them, letting the body drop right there, and pull their own blood, spreading all over, the, all over the sidewalk, all over the grass, as they haul away the young men, rape the women and the children. These are the things you're going to have to endure. Your faith endure to the end, no matter what. You're going to have to endure. And you're going to have to keep the faith, and you're going to have to keep fighting. You're going to have to keep fighting. Because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation, it's going to be going on. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're going to be uh, 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 closing this video out. We don't want it to be too long. Uh, we're going to read a, read a few more verses and close it out. Verse 20, Behold saith Yahweh, I will call together all the kings of the earth to revenge me. And he will. He will. Which all, which are from the rising of the sun, which from the east, from the south, from the east, and Lebanus, to turn themselves and against another, and repay the things that they have done to them. You see? That time is coming. Verse 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Though thus says the Lord, my right hand shall not spare the sinners. And my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rekakwadash. We're going to close it out right there. Hopefully, you were edified in the spirit by today's video, by today's lesson. It's entitled. Endure until the end. Hopefully this video has been some motivation unto you to help you think about it and give you some inspiration to motivate you to endure until the end. We'd like to give all praises and all honors to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, and Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone that taught us this truth. Peace and salutation to the hopeful elects. Shalom to the hopeful elects.